What's up everyone, it's Tyranitar Tube and welcome back to another Pokemon coverage video. Gameplay, that's what this video is on. There may not have been any news lately, but the Pokemon company has been updating their site with gameplay snippets of things we've seen, as well as a few more things. So let's go ahead and take a look at them. The first few snippets are of Primal Kyogre and Primal Groudon in battle against other starter Pokemon. A part of these clips are actually shown in one of the first few trailers for Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, and it caused speculation towards what attacks these two could be using. One of the bigger ideas were that Primal Kyogre was using Thousand Arrows and Primal Groudon was using Thousand Waves. But just by looking at the animations, it's understandable why that was thought, but those are not the moves they're actually using. Here I have a Zygarde with Thousand Arrows and Thousand Waves, and the animation has big notable differences. For one, the two moves can easily be seen as exclusive to Zygarde as the animations contain the green hexagon like particles that can only be found on Zygarde. And secondly, it's understandable why Groudon would get it being primarily a physical ground Pokemon, but why would Kyogre, a special water Pokemon, get a move like that as well? These two moves are definitely not Thousand Arrows and Thousand Waves, but from the looks of it, it seems like Primal Pokemon get access to a new move, but we don't know for sure yet. The next snippet shows us the full gameplay of the encountering and catching of a Pokemon. The Pokemon appear just like they do in the original games and the scenery is very similar. The Pokeball can be seen thrown straight on and the registration to the Pokedex also closely resembles the original game's animation. It's just perfect and I can't wait to see any new additions that could be in these games and we'll get to that right now. And finally, here are the goodies. We finally have proper gameplay of the Acrobike and the Mock Bike in action. Here, the player can be seen riding the Acrobike across the bridges in Fortree City, across the thin beams in Route 119, and up the stepping stones in the Jagged Pass beside Route 112. The player can also be seen riding the Mock Bike across the cycling road and up mudslides in the Granite Cave. I think you've realized that this Acrobike and Mock Bike gameplay is the kind of gameplay that you'll find more things in it the more you look at it. Here, a nice look at the updated graphics can be seen, the sign in the back, the NPCs, the ladders, bridges, and the tree houses. As the player rides along, the angle changes and the Fortree City gem can be seen in the background. With this gem having a tree house like design unlike the original building design, it's possible gems will have a new design that'll correspond with the city itself, like Silage City's gem and X and Y being in a cave. This tree house here, which was originally the secret base shop where you could buy new decorations, seems to get a full upgrade, and this may be the location where you meet Erun, as we know as the secret base expert. And this may be the city that you'll also introduce the secret bases in. Moving on, if you look closely, the player seems to be doing a wheelie on the Acrobike each time they're on a bridge or beam, which may be a small new addition as they've never really given a use to the wheelie, and it would make sense to already be in that pose when jumping from platform to platform. But this area is heavily expanded, with more trainers, more beams, and more areas containing more items. A ninja disguised as a tree can be seen in the back, and if you look at the bottom, the beams seem to not block the path underneath, meaning you may get access underneath and and may be able to surf under to get to new areas. And then there's the Jagged Pass. This area seems to get a huge upgrade. It's much larger with more areas, grass patches, and trainers. There's even horizontal stepping stones now and much more, which could give access to even more areas. The player can then be seen riding along the cycling road perfectly at full speed, possibly showcasing the timing challenge. But a lot can be seen in the background, like the starting gate, the buildings underneath, and the cyclers on the road. Right here, the Trick Master's house can be seen, and unusually, it actually looks very similar to its original design. And finally, we have extended footage of the mudslide in the Granite Cave. In the original game, the cave is much smaller, but in this game, there are new horizontal mudslides allowing you to climb up to what used to be a wall, along with a ton of new ladders. I can definitely see these new areas leading to mega stones and other things, but with all of these new additions in these games, I absolutely cannot wait to see what else they may have to offer. But anyways guys, that's it for this analysis and breakdown video. Feel free to leave a like if you enjoyed the video and let me know your thoughts on the gameplay revealed, especially the fact that there's going to be a ton of new areas in these games. There's going to be a lot more coverage on Pokemon Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, so be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out.